Hello. Today we have a special guest. Um, we have a Dr. Steve Grossinger. Hi, doctor. Hey, Emily. Great to see you. Um, I am so excited about this conversation because you are not only a doctor, but you are stepping out of your comfort zone and you have started a YouTube channel and a podcast sharing your amazing, extensive training and experience. I mean, double board certified in pain management and neurology. You started out in internal medicine. Um, and, and I have quickly learned that you are a translator for the common person to be able to understand all this medical ease. Um, so please, um, tell me why you decided to step out on a limb to start this, this YouTube channel and, and, and this podcast. Sure. Um, I think it's an extension of how my practice has evolved. Uh, I went to medical school in the 1980s and uh, did a rotating internship in various specialties. And then I did an internal medicine residency. So I became a board certified internist. I was at a point where I had to decide, do I practice internal medicine? Do I maybe become a cardiologist or a gastroenterologist? And uh, I have to admit it was a intoxicated decision. Uh, my brother and I were at a, a event. My, my, my older brother happens to be a neurologist and uh, he suggested that I train in neurology and join him. So uh, I, I did a neurology residency. I, so, so basically in 1991, I was board certified in neurology, uh, in internal medicine, and by 1994 was board certified and focused on general neurology. Um, over the next six years or so, I was on staff at hospitals, uh, would see patients with strokes and seizures and coma, intensive care unit, and then also had an office practice that saw all kinds of neurologic problems from MS to tremor to uh, nerve pain. Uh, I did do nerve testing. So that focused uh, EMG and nerve conduction studies, which focused my practice on people with neck pain, back pain, uh, shooting pain into their arms and legs. In about 2000, I started to focus on pain management. Mm. and um, had training and started doing procedures. Uh, and under x-ray guidance, I do epidural injections. Um, I do various kinds of injections, including uh, under ultrasound guidance into shoulders, hips, knees, and, and other body parts. Um, but I, I would say most of my practice now is pain management, uh, though there is the focus on concussion and um, nerve injury, um, neuropathy. Um, I really have focused away since I, I had to choose what I would do and what I would not do. And I stopped treating problems such as stroke. Uh, I, I stopped going into the hospital. Um, and my focus has been on pain. <clears throat> and I, I think because of my background, maybe the internal medicine, the pain management, Along the way, I, I did a pretty intensive focus on, on acupuncture. Uh, I, I went out to, to California. I, I live in Philadelphia, but I went out to California for 10 days and uh, um, was exposed to various approaches. And, and it, it was interesting to learn about the science or the, the, the approach of uh, acupuncture, which uh, plays in the same sandbox, but from a different approach, the, the energy, uh, the chi, and the mathematical parts. But uh, I guess as I've evolved, and maybe I've... Uh, I've always tried to to listen <clears throat> listen to people. You know, I think it's important to talk, but important to listen and hearing different stories. Um, I think I I basically wanted to get to the point where I could help in, in different ways besides prescribing pain medicine, um, which you know can be a big part of pain management. But I, I really, uh, though I do have some people who I try to cautiously, uh, you know, prescribe medicine. I, I really am trying to lean away from that, and. Uh, the basic premise of, of my podcast is uh, trying to, is, is, is called Better Without Pills. I love that. And, I uh, love that. And I, I think the, the things that drew me to, uh, to trying to put this together was uh, partly there were um, 
circumstances that I would discuss in the office and someone comes in for a consultation or uh, for an evaluation and, and I may feel that, that a nutritional approach could help them. And as I start talking, I would find that, that time has flown by and the waiting room gets a little more crowded. And in, in a way it was, you know, I, I wanted to be able to spread my message and my perspective, but it was difficult, you know, fortunately I had a busy practice uh, and I have a busy practice. And, and so I feel good now to have a, um, to have a, um, a, a, uh, a platform where I can spread, you know, my, my, my concerns and, and tell, uh, you know, tell people perspectives that, um, that I could now be able to say to someone, go watch my episode of the podcast where I discussed low carb or where I discussed this diagnosis and my approach to that. Uh, um, so I, I would say that, that, and then the feeling that I, I would like to interview some of my patients who've had nice results, which, which I have, uh, or people like yourself who, you know, have, uh, uh, who I cross paths in social media or, and, uh, and then also, you know, to, to connect with some of the, the other uh, thought leaders um, uh, out there and trying to help people get better without pills. I love that. I love that. And it, and it just, it's, what I love is that it, it goes against what we have experienced, what I have experienced. I have experienced a neurologist that doesn't want to talk about my diet, doesn't want to talk about what I did and how I changed my health. And even that I lost, you know, 120 pounds, they don't even want to talk about it. And, and so to have you as a doctor to want to even discuss this and to educate. That's what I love is that your whole purpose or your whole focus of your channel is that you want to educate people, um, you know, your be it your clients that you can just send them this link or be it somebody that you've never even met. You just want to offer your expertise and your training that you've had and how you're seeing this. Um, so have, have your patients been open to, to going more low carb or have they been resistant? I would say it's a combination. I think, uh, some feel like, uh, it's, it's too foreign. They, they do have concerns, which I also plan to dig deep on, uh, concerns about, you know, will, will it make their cholesterol too high? Uh, uh, the, the, even the, 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 the rhyme or reason, uh, for it. Um, I, um, find that uh, that there are some that 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 I'm preaching to the choir and and it's really they've been I think looking to have someone uh, maybe give them permission or give them guidance and and often I I will email uh, a series of some some videos of, of other thought leaders and, and to give a, a framework um, but I um, it, it is it is a balance and I and I think I'm I'm some people I I kind of have to wear down and 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 again I, I don't expect people to run in you know necessarily cold turkey to change their diet, but you know whether it's just being more mindful of, of processed foods, being more mindful of the amount of carbohydrates that they eat, um, to try to have water instead of soda and 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 things such as that 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 just may make them feel like a, a start of benefit, uh, and and then that they can hopefully go deeper and, and maybe get to the point where they do see that, that the elimination of, uh, of pro-inflammatory things that, that may be causing their problems, uh, you know, is, is, is a possibility. Yeah. And so obviously you came to this realization. Is that because you have had a personal experience with eating low carb? Well, I have to admit, I've, been on, I think every diet out there at, at, at different points. Uh, you know, I kid, I've, I've gained uh, 300 pounds and lost 305 pounds. Um, though basically since about September of, uh, of last year, I have been, uh, low carb and have lost 20 pounds myself. Uh, I, wow. I, I feel good. I, I've, I've had my share of aches and pains. Uh, my low back, uh, has been unhappy and the, points I've had epidural injections or I've been sidelined. I've woken up and had trouble getting out of bed. So um, fortunately being at a better weight, uh, th there was a, a point where my weight got up to 230 pounds and I really thought I was going to need surgery. 
and I really clamped down and lost 30 pounds. Uh, that was in my 40s. And now I'm 61 years old, and and I, I I do feel like at this at this phase of life, if you don't have a game plan, if you just stick with the standard American diet and you don't have some kind of exercise program, you're going to regret it. And you know, it's it's not just lifespan, but health span. You want to you want to be healthy. You know, and enjoy. You know, whether you retire, or have grandchildren. You know, you you want to have a quality of life. I always say grandchildren are, are better medicine than I I can give. You know, for most people, um, but uh. Fortunately, I have been able to see uh, the, the the benefits in my in myself, and 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 then I I do see people come to me who tried all kinds of mainstream medicine approaches, uh, you know, have been been tried on all all different medicines, maybe on a list of of ten medications, and I really feel like there's a better way. I mean, it's, you know, it's not as if they're coming back saying I'm on these 10 medicines and they're making me feel great. It's like they're, they're here because they're, they're still looking for something more and I'm not eager to, to, to pile on to, to the list. Yeah. Um, so for you personally, I mean, has, has your diet changed um, or do, what, what do you eat or have you eaten since September? I um, aim to be uh, animal based. Um, I do have a lot of red meat. I, I, I've become a steak aficionado, uh, <laughs> but I, but I do, I, I love seafood. I, um, I have had some, some carb, uh, uh, at, at times where, where, whether it's just having great ice cream around or something, it, admittedly there, there are those moments, yeah. but I, I really try to, to, to make those you know special times and, and have the, the, the uh, main part, uh, be, uh, focusing on, on eating lower carb. Um, intermittent fasting is something that I've also suggested for various patients. And at times I've been concerned that they may have nutritional, like uh, malnutrition or, or inadequate nutrition if they focus too much on on just fasting. And that's why I, I like that carnivore reduces or, or, or low carb reduces inflammation, yet at the same time you are getting uh, nutrient dense foods to, to, to not let them down, you know, and, and if someone is sick with symptoms, they, they do need to, to recover. So, uh, you know, I think there is a balance and, and, uh, I do have a, a, a respect for, for intermittent fasting. And, um, actually once you get to the point that you're running on ketones or, or fat as a fuel, as opposed to, to sugar, then considering trying to, to intermittent fast, uh, it becomes a lot easier because you're, you're not on that roller coaster of, of insulin. Uh, it's counterintuitive, but, but you don't get hungry till you eat, you know, often you, you may have a day, you know, people may find that they, they wake up and have a bagel for breakfast. And then at lunchtime, they're, they're definitely hankering for, for something. Whereas if you, maybe you're busy enough that you don't necessarily eat and then, you know, lunchtime may come and you may, maybe one o'clock before you really, you know, decide to grab something. So it, it, it does become easier. A lot of things are, are, are positive uh, when you're running more on, on ketones, the, the, the brain functions better on, on ketones uh, uh, than, than, than sugar. And so whenever you were struggling with your health and your weight, um, what was different about what you were eating? What were you eating before? Well, I did feel like I was on the diet of the month club and I, I tried everything from Jenny Craig to uh, trying to, you know, and admittedly things that, that felt, you know, in retrospect may have been somewhat faddish. Uh, I, I really don't feel like low carb is, is, a, is a fad diet. I, I think it really is more of uh, a proper human diet as uh, uh, like Dr. Dr. Barry says. Um, uh, it was a situation where I felt like I could be satiated, like I like I wasn't hungry, that I, I felt good and energized. That that um, um, it definitely was a better a better balance for me than than when I either was just eating with reckless abandon or just trying to watch calories and and even just you know going low calorie per se. Um, I did not find to be sustainable. I found to be you know a bit of torture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so going forward, I'm so excited about your channel. Um, what is your vision for, um, doing this podcast and, and for doing this, this YouTube channel? I want to educate, um, give my perspective that I've gained from my general personality and also the, 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 the training that I've had, the 
just the countless you know patients I've been privileged to to treat, um, and uh, trying to as we're doing here for me to to interface and and we we had a discussion before which I really appreciated where you told me about uh, the the course that that you had finding people by by showing um, people that. Uh, people who are, who are checking in because they they need help or, or want something to change and and letting them see that there there is a, a different way that that people have made a modification and, and really uh, you know had either a small or a huge change um, you know I think the combination of that and and I really uh, would love love the opportunity to speak to, to different thought leaders out there and, I, and fortunately as I've reached out uh, some really uh, uh, you know knowledgeable and experienced people have have uh, had willingness to to speak at some point but of course they they want you to have a following before uh, you know they their their time is valuable so uh, it, it's great to just start to to build things uh, you know somewhat or, organically and uh, uh, but it's you know and and I, I'm I'm looking forward to to going with you know whether there be a new medical breakthrough or, or something that hits the mainstream and and being able to comment on that. Um, a big part of my practice is uh, regenerative medicine. Uh, I do PRP or platelet-rich plasma injection, yeah. which involves a simple blood draw and the blood being put into a uh, centrifuge. And when it's then spun down, it separates the, the different factors. And then that can be injected uh, into areas, including uh, shoulders, hips, knees, and uh, uh, it can be used for aesthetic reasons, actually can be used for some sexual dysfunction. So there are various ways um, I, I use a stem cell in a similar way. Um, so, you know, I, I think that this would be a nice chance for me to try to um, clarify some some uh, situations that, 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 that people may just not know about. Some people, I, I mentioned PRP or platelet-rich plasma, and they've never heard of it or they don't know the potential benefit. And uh, fortunately, I have uh, uh, testimonials. Uh, one of the things that, that I realized going through, uh, there are studies where they look at hundreds of people but then there are situations that are referred to as N of one, or that the number of people in the study is is one individual, and and you're a classic example of an of the N of one. And uh, as a physician, we want to be careful not to be too swayed by that. But but at times it it gets to the point where it is so compelling that it, it's hard to ignore. And again, it's you know I, I see my role as uh, I, I say I, I lay things on the table and help people decide what to pick up. You know, some people just you know, are, are not going to want to have an injection. Uh, they, they may say they, they never want to have surgery. Uh, they, they may feel like they're either taking too many pills. You know, some people want that magic pill, which I mean, at times I, I have prescribed something and people, you know, are so thankful, but, you know, so I'm, I'm open to, to the possibility, but my, my inclination in the direction I'm trying to go is, uh, in prescribing less. And, uh, when, a simple nutritional change, whether it be adding something or eliminating something, has potential for for someone to to to, to see improvement in their status, uh, their situation. Uh, that that is something that 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 really uh, uh, excites me and and uh, motivates me. That's awesome, and to show us how to manage our health better without pills. You know, I mean, that's what all that we've been uh, from the typical mainstream uh, the medical is pills pills, pills, pills. And so I love that that is your focus. Um, and I'm so excited to not only for me to learn more from you, but to have you as a resource that whenever, you know, my clients come to me and I'm like, actually go, go listen to this guy, because like you said, you're going to be our translator to really break down these, these huge, uh, confusing concepts into understandable, um, examples and analogies. It's, it's, uh, from my progression through internal medicine and then the, the different areas and then, then neurology and pain, uh, fortunately it's gotten me to the point where I, I guess, uh, certain things just by, by the, by seeing it repeatedly or, or being exposed to the different training, fortunately it's given me an, an insight and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a person too. And in one tricky part is, is a lot of it is going against the, 
whether it be the big money that has evolved things to where they are. I mean, even when I look back in medical school and my training and the way modern medicine feels, a lot of times it it does feel like we're trying to find a number, whether it be your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your cholesterol, and saying, we got a pill that'll, that'll modify that number and saying, okay, I'll see you next month to give you that pill again and, and month after month. And uh, I, I, that's not really the, the model that I, I strive for. I, I do like when I see people repetitively because I get to, to establish a, a relationship and, and uh, gain their trust, which I, I, I cherish and take pride uh, when, when someone puts their, their, their trust in me. Uh, it's, it's, it's very gratifying. That's so awesome. And I'm just, I'm so excited to see this grow for you. Um, and so Dr. Steve Grossinger and, um, on, uh, Facebook, um, I was able to find you by just Dr. Steve Grossinger. And then on Instagram at Dr. Gross Grossinger, I'm sorry, Grossinger. Um, and then, uh, of course on YouTube, um, it's the same. So I am uh, so excited to get to champion you and to hopefully have my listeners follow you. And uh, I can't wait to to hear how this is going to unfold. I'm so appreciative of, of your time. I mean, and your, your story and just, just your energy is, is infectious. And uh, it's been so nice to have a chance to speak with you. And, and thank you for helping me get my, my words out. Not a problem. Thank you, doctor. Bye. Bye-bye.